Hi, Coach! Hello! Coach, nice to see you, ah. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Coach. How are you? Good, good. It's nice to see you, ah. It's been a while, ah. Oo nga. Okay ba set up ko? Provinsyang, provinsyang. <laughs> okay lang yan. Maganda. Basta maganda ang kwentuhan. <laughs> Na clear ba? Clear? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can hear you naman. I'm gonna edit this naman, Coach. Eh. So, tatanggalin ko naman yung parts na medyo naglalag tayo. Eh. And also, yung mga parts na baka gusto mong tanggalin. Baka lang masyadong sumarap yung kwentuhan. <laughs> baka may supply, ha? Oo, oh, baka may supply. I'm with Coach Nash Rasella of the Blackwater Bossings. Coach, sobrang ano, ha? salamat sa oras mo, Coach. Ha? Oh, thank you, Mikey, for having me. Tagal na natin ito pinag-uusapan, eh, no? Ngayon lang nangyari. <laughs> Ngayon lang nalibre si Coach Nash. Eh. Ngayon lang nagka-oras si Coach Nash. But I'm excited to have you on, Coach. You're one of the few coaches pa lang na nagsayang ng oras ma- makipagkwentuhan sa akin. Kasi alam mo naman, I really wanna know uh, kung baga, what goes on sa coaches, sa players. And I'm very, very excited to have a chance to speak with you. I'm sure lahat din ng Blackwater fans gusto yung mga inside scoop natin sa team mo. Especially sa team mo, Coach, because of the way it's built. Yung mga movements niyo during the off-season. And of course, the recently concluded draft, Coach. So... Let's start it off, Coach, with ano, uh, kumusta yung picks ninyo, Coach? I know you picked second round na, but I believe na naka-steal kayo dun sa Ponel Balingit na idol niya, si Akuno. <laughs> First time nagkita si, uh, si Raymark, Akuno, at saka si Coach Romel. Sabi niya eh, sa lahat naman ang sasabihin mo eh, si Bonel pa, hindi na lang ako. Sabi niya. Pero syempre, sabi nga namin, nakakatawa because uh, na-site niya nga as uh, someone he looks up to, si Bonel, no? na ex-PBA player, matagal din naglaro sa, sa Liga. Uh, nagaling din pala din sa kanilang lugar. Uh, sa Lanao, di ba? Lanao yeah. Kababayan nga daw niya kasi coach. Eh. Kaya siguro, siguro nakasama niya for a while, nakakwentuhan niya. But coach, let me just ask you before we go to Joshua Toralba. Si Akuno, because when you had, when you, when you had to trade, okay, kakat ko yun ha. <laughs> when you traded uh, Mauricio, um, I felt like you needed a big. And yung main bigs of the draft, alam mo na mawawala na sa first round. Sina Adamos, sina Muya. Did you did you have your eyes set on Akuno? Si Raymart Akuno nung second round? Um, yeah, um, part of the process kasi when we had a meeting with uh, coaching staff, was to identify the syempre, yung top 13 sa aming pananaw, yung top 13 picks para more or less mas, makita namin who would be available dun sa 14 and 15. And true enough, dun sa mga pangalan na nilis na namin, um, actually, isa lang ang sumablay kami, hindi kami nag-100%. Eh. So, ang lumabas dun sa top 13 namin was Frankie Johnson. Uh, so, actually, that's a big question mark for us. Uh, sabi namin, if ever ba mag-slip ang isa dyan, kukunin ba natin? So, before the draft, we identified na, well, we have decided on na pag si Frankie Johnson mag-slip, hindi namin kukunin because we have uh, so many guards already. Uh, kaya nga, I think natuwa ang Rainer Sain na umabot pa nila si Frankie. So, well, going back to your question, um, yeah, because um, somehow tama yung, medyo tama yung anticipation namin sa top 30. Nakita na namin kung sino yung mga uh, possible picks na makukuha namin. And si Ray Mark Acuna was really uh, part of that group na sinisilip namin. Yeah, and yun nga eh, to get a big who is obviously willing to learn, didn't make much of a name or a, as big a name as he would have wanted with UE. Pero ngayon, he has a chance with, with of course, Black, Blackwater Bossings and medyo big man nga siguro would have a spot sa team ninyo. But moving forward to Joshua Toralba, who was also somewhat kumbaga, making noise din kahit papano eh. Bumalik siya dito, nag-MPBL, medyo nagpakita din ang kakayanan niya, especially with his outside shooting. Where did that process come from naman? Uh, nagulat ba kayo na nandun si Joshua Toralba or you were really looking at him then? A few days before the draft, there were some talks na si Joshua Rao might be picked in the first uh, late yep. first round of time. Uh, but to be honest, um, before the trade, uh, the, the last trade happened, uh, we were really looking at picking two bigs 
Mm-hmm. Kung pwede talaga dalawang big man. Because uh, somehow si Don Trulliani was already set as our three guy. So medyo naka, ano na kami sa amin because yung mga big guys sa TV are very scars. Basta may matirang bigs dyan, kunin na natin yung mga usapan namin. And actually, dun sa list namin, uh, ang mga possible bigs na na susunod si Puno, si Paras, and... Uh, I think si Habilosa, yun yata yung mm-hmm. list na nakikita namin na mga possible next bigs. Eh. Um, but because the trade happened, uh, nabutasan kami ng isang perimeter player when we lost uh, Don plus uh, a guard, the point guard in Suma. So bigla nagbago. Uh, a yeah. few days before the draft, few days before the draft, bigla nagbago yung direction namin instead of getting two bigs. Uh, pukuha na tayo ngayon ng ano, na, na, isang perimeter player. And uh, again, si Joshua was really on top of that list. So we were very fortunate that we got sila pareho sa. Yeah, and you were there when Joshua was playing for Lasal, so you somewhat know the naman kung paano siya maglaro. Pero coach, nakuha niyo pa si Andre para sa fourth round, fourth, third, third round, third, third round. So that was that was a surprise to you, na oh nakakuha ka din ng dalawang big man. Um, yeah, major surprise yon. Actually, we're looking at sabi namin if, if we're gonna get a third guy baka perimeter player na rin baka hanap tayo ng isang project na perimeter player but uh, when it was nearing the 27th pick biglang sumisilip tong si si Andre so uh, yeah uh, masaya kami dahil kumbaga everything was according to plan nakakuha kami ng dalawang bigs and then na-strength na namin yung uh, perimeter spot namin Ah, uh, yung yung sumilip nung napick na si si coach Benji na sumilip eh nung napick. <laughs> Lagi si na sabi Blackwater Tama Rouse. Ngayon parang fighting maroons na binubuo mo diyan ah. Ano ay? Ah, sige ano, fighting Tama Rouse. Fighting Tama Rouse. Yung tawag na kasi nila eh. Uh, Blackwater Fighting Tama Rouse. Oh. Pero nakalimutan na nila na may mga Sanbeda players din eh. Oh, so may David Semerat. David Semerat. Medyo halo-halo na. Oh, halo-halo <laughs> Ano na eh, all-star ng college yung team mo ngayon, coach eh. I'm sure, ano din, kumbaga nakasama mo din lahat ito, especially on the college level. So somewhat, alam mo kung paano sila handle. You know, it was a good draft even though you had a pick second round na. I'm sure these guys coming in, especially your first two picks, eh, magkakaroon agad ng immediate impact sa, hopefully sa rotation mo and then sa laro ninyo. But coach, let's talk about yung trade ninyo pre-draft. Um, you traded away Roy Suma, uh, Mauricio, and a very underrated Don Trulliano. I believe, alam ko, coach, nasakta ka doon sa Don Trulliano kahit medyo nakakuha ka ng Simon and Ciso. I always said that doon sa trade na yon si Don yung pinakamasakit. Kasi si Roy, at least, you have Mike, Simon came in, Baser came in. So more or less, yung Don yung ano mo. And you talked about it, yung medyo nabutasan kay Bigla sa tres. What was that process like naman with the trade? And yung nakuha nyo pabalik is a solid four and also a steady one. Well, si Don, our top scorer in yeah. the bubble. He was our top rebounder in the bubble. So, and yeah, tama ka. May set kami dun sa three spot to Don. And uh, well, according to plan, he was, kumbaga, he was gonna play at least 35 uh, minutes for us. So, malaking kawalan. Um, si Roy, hindi masyado na, napapansin, pero malaking kawalan siya. He's also one of our top scorers in the bubble. Um, and also one of our top rebounding guys. Uh, I, I think he was averaging uh, close to five rebounds uh, per ball game. So, kung, kung idadagdag mo pa si Matt, well, our previous trade, uh, we've lost a total of 36 points, 18 rebounds, and uh, I think eight assists. So, medyo mabigat. Kasi mabigat sa amin na moving forward, baka hindi ganun kadali na uh, kumuha ng pinto. But again, it's umaga tapos na and now we're looking forward to our uh, new additions. Uh, we, we see um, somehow the offense namin will, will improve them with Baser and uh, Simon. Uh, and our toughness, static to that with the uh, addition of uh, David. So yeah, I see a lot of positive in sa galaw pa rin. Oh naman, coach. And these are, kumbaga, vets na din eh. Like, you talk about Baser, you talk about uh, Simon and Cici, even si David Semerad. Pero, coach, totoo ba na farewell party ba ni Roy yung ano nyo? Pumunta pa daw siya sa... <laughs> oh, dito. Oh. Isa, ano. Sabi nga niya, ano ba to Farewell party pala yun. <laughs> <laughs> Kaya nga yung, yung 
Yun pala yung ano, yung pala yung sumpa nung pagpunta sa coach. Oo, <laughs> pero sayang nga eh, because uh, again, yung mga times na we spent together, shared experiences, yung yun yun nakakatulong sa pag-build ng team. Eh. And I, I really felt na after that time na nakalabas kami ng Manila, spent a day uh, together with our small group. Sabi ko, nag, nag, uh, no, gumagano yung relationship namin ito eh, because uh, uh, the last time we were able to do that, was I think in 2013 pa yata or 14 dun sa Gilas when we were under coach uh, John Uchiko. So doon kami huli nagkasama eh. So pagka uh, follow up na sa amin pa. But now things are, some things are beyond our control. Hindi naman lagi natin sinasabi. May mga bagay na yung nangyayari na yung time niya natin yung next step. We just have to pangupin natin and we just have to move forward. Yeah, and I was one of those guys who was who I was very excited, especially when you said that you wanted UE Roy Sumang to come out because I was like, okay, finally a coach who actually knows like how Roy was in college, and I was excited for that. And lumabas yung laro niya nung Blackwater, baka kaya siguro natipuan siya ng Enlex at kubaga tinray nilang kunen kasi di ba malakas yung maganda ganda talaga yung pinakita ni Roy and di ba that was a trade that um. Kumbaga, nagulat lahat. It was for you, for Enlex, and of course, si Mikey naman napunta sa talk and text. But like what you said, control what you can control, which is something na I know that you are great at. Now, what is the biggest challenge now? Because this is more ano, personal lang konti. When you coached FEU, you were one of the favorites. When you coach talk and text, same thing. Now that you're coaching a team that is rebuilding, what are the challenges na basically hindi masyado nakikita ng tao on the court? Oh yeah, marami. Um, when you really follow the PBA, and you, would, you would understand the landscape of the PBA, right? Gusto ko up I'm here up, ano? Yeah, yeah. Gusto ko nga mag-follow up eh. Like yung sinasabi din sa iyo. Gusto ko mag-follow up sa sinabi ni Coach Lane. Because, di ba, sabi niya, dati nati, lagi yung sinasabi, pinaglalabanan na lang yung second place. No? Tapos ko lang sabi niya, so ngayon, parang set na yung top four teams. Ang so, mga teams niya, pinaglalabanan na lang yung fifth place, sabi niya. Minsan gusto ko siyang lukuhin. Buti nga kayo po, sumalapan kayo sa fifth place. Eh. Kami lumalapan sa ninth. Diba? So, pero siyempre, um, to me, it's, it's really a very big challenge eh. Alam namin kung saan kami nakapresyo, kung saan kami nanggagaling. The only way makakat kami is to really work as a group and siguro, try to outwork uh, the other team. Ano siguro? Do your best. Tignan natin kung saan tayo aabot. Yeah, medyo nagsishare nga kayo ng same sentiments to ni Coach Yenggiao. Yung Coach Yenggiao was on a tear the other day. So, <laughs> medyo mainit si Coach Yeng no isang araw. But yeah. On the, on the basketball side of things, I always said this, I always, when I would look at your lineup, you have a lot of guards. Now, um, I think nung binilang ko nung isang araw, Mike, Ed, June, Jego, Chris, Simon, Baser, Hubert is still there? Hubert, uh, he's still fighting for a spot. Yeah, so eight, eight guards. Are there any immediate plans for this? Eight guards? <laughs> things be under control. Uh, sometimes they just fall on your lap. Uh, Kailangan natin tanggapin and then just manage. Uh, I think it's part of the territory. Oh, basta yung mga bata ko, Coach, ha? <laughs> Lagaan mo yung mga bata ko. Masisipag yung mga bata ko, Coach. <laughs> Masisipag, yes. Coming from Coach Nash, because Roy mentioned this, gano'ng kasipag si Diego Dario? Hindi ko alam ko, natutulog pa yun. Eh. <laughs> Tuwing nakikita ko, lagi nagtatrabaho eh. Kaya kong, ang lagi kong comment kay Diego sa mga social media posts yun, sabi ko pa, grabe ka, hindi ka talaga nagmimintis ha. <laughs> Lahat ng attempts niya, pasok ka rin. Ganda na mga galaw ni, ni Diego eh. He really works hard. Pag nakita mo naman, he's really improving. Oh yeah, and, and talagang ano, tinrabaho niya yun ever since he was a rookie in college. Pero coach, another guard lang that I wanted to ask because we didn't see him in the bubble. 
he's made a big name for himself, especially in the MPBL. Si Chris Pitoon. I I went up against Chris, and I know what Chris can do. Ano yung kung bago aning lagay niya sa 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 team mo ngayon? Because I didn't see him in the bubble, so medyo nag ano lang ako. Well, same same with the others. He's still fighting for a spot. Uh, mabigat because uh, after all the player movements, eh, nakakuha pa kami ng dalawang additional cards. So, ah. I mean, kung masikip na dati, di lalo mas masikip na yun. Again, that's the reality. They have to face, uh, control what they can control, yeah. put in the work every day. And sinarate, kung saan, kung saan, saan sila malalagay na. Realistically speaking though, sa lahat ng guardiang sinabi ko, ang pinakamasakit sa ulo mo siguro would be, who's gonna be your main point guard? Because Simon, Baser, and Mike, to me, are the three. Si Ed kasi lalagay ko pa sa dos yun eh. Pero yung tatlong yun, coach, paano mo naman niya? <laughs> Sino doon naman? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a good problem. Uh, yeah, puro combo guard yun eh. Yeah. Uh, Let's see. Eh, alam mo naman, ang style ko naman eh, I, I try to give everybody a chance. Kung maganda pinapakita, then you turn your minutes. You, then pwede natin habaan ng habaan. And sometimes, that's usually my, uh, a lot of times, it's my basis for who I play in the end game. So, <laughs> Kagulo-gulo kayo dyan. Pero kagandahan din, Coach, all the guards that we've mentioned, swak din naman talaga dun sa sistema mo, which is the dribble drive. And alam kong sobrang saya ni Mike dun, sobrang saya ni Ed dun, ni Roy, sobrang saya dun. So I'm sure Simon and Baser will fit right in dun sa ganong sistema. Lastly, before I ano, let you go live your provincial life, um, Coach Chot is back. And I know that he was a mentor to you. You were assistant. You were an assistant to him for so long. How excited are you for Coach Nash Rasela versus Coach Chot Reyes? Is that the first time? This will be the first uh, first time uh, yeah. in the PBA. Yeah, I'm excited and happy actually for Coach Chot. He deserves really a recall. Uh, sabi ko nga, siyempre, of all the coaches, not against the other coaches, but of all the coaches that uh, kumawak sa top and top. Uh, Coach Chot naman din talaga ang pinaka- nagbigay ng pinakamarami sa kanya. And that, just because of that, syempre, he deserves another chance. Diba? So, eh, lagi naman handa yan eh, kung Coach Chot. Uh, especially now that, well, the way I see it, yung lineup ng top and top, it's a lot better uh, and a lot younger yeah. compared to a uh, few years ago. Yeah, and I know that's something to look forward to always. Coach Chot versus Coach Tash. Coach Josh is also on the other side. So, that will be exciting and Coach, cut ko na lang to if ever. Nakita ko yung tweet mo ah. Ano ibig sabihin nun? <laughs> yung pie chart. Ayun pie. 40-40-20, di ba? 40-40-20. Alam mo naman. 